Apsis Greek, hapsis plural apsides, Greek, hapsis orbit, denotes either of the two extreme points, i.e., the farthest or nearest point, in the orbit of a planetary body about its primary body, or simply, the primary. The plural term, apsides, usually implies both apsis points, i.e., farthest and nearest. Apsides can also refer to the distance of the extreme range of an object orbiting a host body. For example, the apsides of Earth's orbit of the Sun are two, the apsis for Earth's farthest point from the Sun, dubbed the aphelion, and the apsis for Earth's nearest point, the perihelion see top figure. The term, apsis, a cognate with apse, comes via Latin from Greek, typically, there are two apsides in any elliptic orbit. Each is named by selecting the appropriate prefix, ap, apo from ap, o ap, o, meaning away from, or peri from peri, peri, meaning near, then joining it to the reference suffix of the host body being orbited. For example, the reference suffix for Earth is g, hence apogee and perigee are the names of the apsides for the Moon, and any other man-made satellites of the Earth. The suffix for the sun is helion, hence aphelion and perihelion are the names of the apsides for the Earth and for the sun's other planets, comets, asteroids, etc. See table, top figure. According to Newton's laws of motion all periodic orbits are ellipses, including, 1 the single orbital ellipse, where the primary body is fixed at one focus point and the planetary body orbits around that focus see top figure, and 2 the two-body system of interacting elliptic orbits, both bodies orbit their joint center of mass or barycenter, which is located at a focus point that is common to both ellipses, see second figure. For such a two-body system, when one mass is sufficiently larger than the other, the smaller ellipse of the larger body around the barycenter comprises one of the orbital elements of the larger ellipse of the smaller body. The barycenter of the two bodies may lie well within the bigger body, e.g., the Earth-Moon barycenter is about 75% of the way from Earth's center to its surface. If, compared to the larger mass, the smaller mass is negligible, e.g., for satellites, then the orbital parameters are independent of the smaller mass. When used as a suffix, that is, apsis, the term can refer to the two distances from the primary body to the orbiting body when the latter is located, one, at the periopsis point, or two, at the apopsis point, compare both graphics, second figure. The line of apsides denotes the distance of the line that joins the nearest and farthest points across an orbit, it also refers simply to the extreme range of an object orbiting a host body, see top figure, see third figure. In orbital mechanics, the apsides technically refer to the distance measured between the barycenters of the central body and orbiting body. However, in the case of a spacecraft, the terms are commonly used to refer to the orbital altitude of the spacecraft above the surface of the central body, assuming a constant, standard reference radius. Topic. Terminology. The words «paracenter» and «apocenter» are often seen, although periopsis, apopsis are preferred in technical usage. For generic situations where the primary is not specified, the terms paracenter and apocenter are used for naming the extreme points of orbits see table, top figure, periopsis and apopsis or apapsis are equivalent alternatives, but these terms, frequently, also refer to distances. That is, the smallest and largest distances between the orbiter and its host body, see second figure. For a body orbiting the Sun, the point of least distance is the perihelion, and the point of greatest distance is the aphelion. When discussing orbits around other stars the terms become periastron and apostron. When discussing a satellite of Earth, including the Moon, the point of least distance is the perigee, and of greatest distance, the apogee, from ancient Greek, gi gi, land, or Earth. There are no natural satellites of the Moon. For man-made objects in lunar orbit, the point of least distance may be called the perisynthian, and the greatest distance the apocynthian, or perilune and apolune are sometimes used.
Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> the words perihelion and aphelion were coined by Johannes Kepler to describe the orbital motions of the planets around the sun. The words are formed from the prefixes peri Greek, peri near and apo Greek, apo away from, affixed to the Greek word for the sun, helios or helio. Various related terms are used for other celestial objects. The suffixes g, helion, astron and galacticon are frequently used in the astronomical literature when referring to the earth, sun, stars, and the galactic center respectively. The suffix Jove is occasionally used for Jupiter, but Saturnium has very rarely been used in the last 50 years for Saturn. The G form is also used as a generic closest approach to any planet term instead of applying it only to Earth. During the Apollo program, the terms Parasynthian and Aposynthian were used when referring to orbiting the Moon. They reference Cynthia, an alternative name for the Greek moon goddess Artemis. Regarding black holes, the terms paramelasma and apomelasma from a Greek root were used by physicist and science fiction author Jeffrey A. Landis in a 1998 story, which occurred before paranegracon and aponegracon from Latin appeared in the scientific literature in 2002, and before parabothron from Greek bothros, meaning hole or pit in 2015. Topic. Terminology summary The suffixes shown below may be added to prefixes peri or apo to form unique names of apsides for the orbiting bodies of the indicated host primary system. However, only for the Earth and Sun systems are the unique suffixes commonly used. Typically, for other host systems, the generic suffix, apsis, is used instead. Topic. Perihelion and aphelion Topic. Inner planets and outer planets The two images below show the positions of perihelion and the aphelion in the orbits of the planets of the Solar System. The image below left features the inner planets, their orbits, orbital nodes, and the points of perihelion green dot and aphelion red dot, as seen from above Earth's northern pole and Earth's ecliptic plane, which is coplanar with Earth's orbital plane. From this orientation, the planets are situated outward from the Sun as Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, with all planets traveling their orbits counterclockwise around the Sun. The reference Earth orbit is colored yellow and represents the orbital plane of reference. For Mercury, Venus, and Mars, the section of orbit tilted above the plane of reference is here shaded blue, the section below the plane is shaded violet, pink. The image below right shows the outer planets, the orbits, orbital nodes, and the points of perihelion green dot and aphelion red dot of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as seen from above the reference orbital plane, all traveling their orbits counterclockwise. For each planet the section of orbit tilted above the reference orbital plane is colored blue, the section below the plane is violet, pink. The two orbital nodes are the two endpoints of the line of nodes, where a tilted orbit intersects the plane of reference. Here they may be seen where the blue section of an orbit becomes violet, pink. The reference average distance from Sun to Earth is defined as one astronomical unit, O. Per this reference, Mars averages slightly more than one. Five astronomical units from the Sun, Saturn averages almost 10 astronomical units, and Neptune about 30 astronomical units. See chart below. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lines of apsides. The chart shows the extreme range, from the closest approach, perihelion, to farthest point, aphelion. Of several orbiting celestial bodies of the solar system, the planets, the known dwarf planets, including Ceres, and Halley's Comet. The thickness of a vertical line or bar, or the length of a horizontal bar, both correspond to the extreme range of the orbit of the indicated body around the Sun. 
These extreme distances between perihelion and aphelion are the lines of apsides of the orbits of various objects around a host body. Note, for the reference average distance one astronomical unit of the Earth from the Sun, Mars averages more than 1.5 astronomical units from the Sun, Saturn almost 10 astronomical units, and Neptune about 30 astronomical units. Earth perihelion and aphelion Currently, the Earth reaches perihelion in early January, approximately 14 days after the December solstice. At perihelion, the Earth's center is about 0.98329 astronomical units, or 147,098,070 kilometers, 91,402,500 miles from the sun's center. In contrast, the Earth reaches aphelion currently in early July, approximately 14 days after the June solstice. The aphelion distance between the Earth's and Sun's centers is currently about 1.01671 astronomical units or 152,097,700 kilometers, 94,509,100 miles. Dates change over time due to precession and other orbital factors, which follow cyclical patterns known as Milankovitch cycles. In the short term, the dates of perihelion and aphelion can vary up to two days from one year to another. This significant variation is due to the presence of the Moon. While the Earth Moon barycenter is moving on a stable orbit around the Sun, the position of the Earth's center, which is on average about 4,700 kilometers miles) from the barycenter, could be shifted in any direction from it, and this affects the timing of the actual closest approach between the Sun's and the Earth's centers, which in turn defines the timing of perihelion in a given year. Because of the increased distance at aphelion, only 93.55% of the solar radiation from the Sun falls on a given area of land as does at perihelion. However, this fluctuation does not account for the seasons, as it is summer in the northern hemisphere when it is winter in the southern hemisphere and vice versa. Instead, seasons result from the tilt of Earth's axis, which is 23.4 degrees away from perpendicular to the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Winter falls on the hemisphere where sunlight strikes least directly, and summer falls where sunlight strikes most directly, regardless of the Earth's distance from the sun. In the northern hemisphere, summer occurs at the same time as aphelion. Despite this, there are larger land masses in the northern hemisphere, which are easier to heat than the seas. Consequently, summers are 2.3 degrees Celsius 4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere under similar conditions. Astronomers commonly express the timing of perihelion relative to the vernal equinox not in terms of days and hours, but rather as an angle of orbital displacement, the so-called longitude of the periopsis also called longitude of the pericenter. For the orbit of the Earth, this is called the longitude of perihelion, and in 2000 it was about 282.895 degrees. By the year 2010, this had advanced by a small fraction of a degree to about 283.067 degrees. For the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, the time of apsis is often expressed in terms of a time relative to seasons, since this determines the contribution of the elliptical orbit to seasonal variations. The variation of the seasons is primarily controlled by the annual cycle of the elevation angle of the Sun, which is a result of the tilt of the axis of the Earth measured from the plane of the ecliptic. The Earth's eccentricity and other orbital elements are not constant, but vary slowly due to the perturbing effects of the planets and other objects in the solar system. See Milankovitch cycles. On a very long time scale, the dates of the perihelion and of the aphelion progress through the seasons, and they make one complete cycle in 22,000 to 26,000 years. There is a corresponding movement of the position of the stars as seen from Earth that is called the apsidal precession. This is closely related to the precession of the axis. The dates and times of the perihelions and aphelions for several past and future years are listed in the following table. 
Topic: Other planets. The following table shows the distances of the planets and dwarf planets from the sun at their perihelion and aphelion. Topic: Mathematical formulae. These formulae characterize the paracenter and apocenter of an orbit. Paracenter Maximum speed V per equals 1 plus E mu 1 minus E A Text style v underscore text per equals sqrt frac one plus e mu one e a at minimum paracenter distance r per equals one minus e a text style r underscore text per equals one e a apocenter Minimum speed V app equals one minus E mu one plus E A Text style V underscore text app equals SQRT FRAC one E mu one plus E at maximum apocenter distance r app equals 1 plus e a text style r underscore text app equals 1 plus e a while, in accordance with Kepler's laws of planetary motion based on the conservation of angular momentum and the conservation of energy, these two quantities are constant for a given orbit. Specific relative angular momentum h equals 1 minus e 2 mu Display style h equals sqrt left one e caret two right mu a specific orbital energy epsilon equals minus mu two a display style var epsilon equals frac mu two a where a is the semi-major axis equals r per plus r app 2 display style equals frac r underscore text per plus r underscore text app 2 mu is the standard gravitational parameter e is the eccentricity defined as e equals r App minus R per R app plus R per equals one minus two R app R per plus one Display style e equals frac r underscore text app r underscore text per r underscore text app plus r underscore text per equals one frac two frac r underscore text app r underscore text per plus one. Note that for conversion from heights above the surface to distances between an orbit and its primary, the radius of the central body has to be added, and conversely. The arithmetic mean of the two limiting distances is the length of the semi-major axis A. The geometric mean of the two distances is the length of the semi-minor axis B. The geometric mean of the two limiting speeds is minus 2 epsilon equals 
mu a display style sqrt minus 2 var epsilon equals sqrt frac mu a which is the speed of a body in a circular orbit whose radius is a display style a topic see also eccentric anomaly flyby space flight mean anomaly parafocal coordinate system solstice true anomaly